Welcome back. The objectives of this video are to introduce the linear factorization theorem, and again we'll find more zeros of polynomials by factoring. So the linear factorization theorem tells us that whether our zeros are real or imaginary, we can still write our polynomial as factors of real numbers. What we have though is if we have no real zeros, a polynomial is said to be prime or irreducible over the reals. And that, of course, is not the same thing as irreducible over the rationals. For example, if we have x squared plus 1, now that is considered prime. So that would be our, our prime factor. It is irreducible over the reals, meaning if we continue to factor it, we can't get real solutions. In fact, we get imaginary ones. So if we are still factoring, we will factor and get imaginary or complex solutions. So factor results in imaginary or complex solutions. On the other hand, the squared minus 2, we generally wouldn't factor that either, but we can factor it and get a real, re, more real factors. Now these are irrational factors. So we would say that this is irreducible over the rationals, but it's still reducible over the reals. So we can factor x squared minus 2 to x minus the square root of 2 and x plus the square root of 2. So it'll be helpful to remember our complex number flowchart and to realize that complex numbers are made up of real and imaginary numbers. The real number system is a subset of our complex number system. And rational and irrationals are subsets of real numbers. In our sample problem, we're asked to write the polynomial as A, the product of factors that are irres reducible over the rationals as a product of linear factors and quadratic factors that are irreducible over the reals and then to completely factor it. So we'll start by just trying to factor x to the fourth minus x squared minus 20 and that factors to x squared minus 5 times x squared plus 4. We would consider x squared plus 4 prime that can't be factored anymore and x squared minus 5, well, we really can't factor that anymore unless we have irrationals. So this first answer is our product of factors that are irreducible over the rationals. These are both real solutions and these are both rational. So those are both rational, so we are all set there. We can't do any more. Now, if we want to continue to the point where they're irreducible over the reals, well, we can still have irrational factors then. So we can take the x squared minus 5 and continue to factor that to x plus the square root of 5 times x minus the square root of 5. Now, we can't continue to factor x squared plus 4. That is still going to stay the same. So that's going to be no change because we can't turn that into um, an irrational. So now our answer x plus 5 x plus the square root of 5 times x minus the square root of 5 times x squared plus 4 is irreducible over the reals. Okay, we can't factor that anymore and get a real solution. And then finally if we want to completely factor it, now it's okay to have imaginary factors or imaginary zeros. So we get x plus the square root of 5, x minus the square root of 5, and then we can go ahead and factor our x squared plus 4 into our imaginary factors or our complex factors. Then we get our, our conjugate pair there. So another sample problem. We're really doing our checkpoint here. Write the polynomial f of x equals x to the fourth minus 2x squared minus 3 as a product of factors that are irreducible over the rationals, as a product of linear factors that are irreducible over the reals, and then completely 
factored form. So if it's irreducible over the rationals, I can't have any complex or irrational factors. So I'll just go ahead and see if we can factor this at all. And it does factor to x squared minus 3 times x squared plus 1. I can't do any more factoring because if I continue to factor, I'm going to have irrationals there. These are irreducible over the rationals. So that's our answer to A. B, we want the product of linear factors that are irreducible over the reals. So we can continue to factor the x squared minus 3 to x plus the square root of 3, x minus the square root of 3. But since we can't factor x squared plus 1 and get a real solution, real factors, we will just leave that as it is. So this is irreducible over the reals. So that's our answer to B. And then finally, our answer to C, fully factored. Now we don't care if we have imaginary or irrational. So we carry down our irrationals, and then we factor, and we get x plus i times x minus i. And now we have our final one, which is completely factored. So moving on to finding the zeros of a polynomial function. We've got another function. We want to find the zeros, but we're going to give you that 1 plus 3i is one of the zeros. So this is a fourth degree polynomial, so we're going to have four, four zeros, four complex zeros. Well, two of them we have already, 1 plus 3i and the conjugate 1 minus 3i. So now two of them are imaginary for sure. Because they're complex, they come in conjugate pairs. So we have x minus 1 plus 3i and x minus 1 minus 3i. We simplify. We end up with x squared minus 2x plus 10. After we foil this together or follow our pattern, looks like the book followed the pattern here, which is awesome. So that's one of our factors. I'm working down the left-hand side here. I'm doing this algebraically. Uh, we can't do synthetic division, unfortunately. So we do long division. Our divisor is x squared minus 2x plus 10. Our dividend is our original function. We complete our long division, and we get a quotient, which is one of our factors, of x squared minus x minus 6. Well that looks to be factorable. I factor my x squared plus, or I factor my x squared minus x minus 6 to x minus 3x plus 2. So we have zeros of x equals 3 and x equals negative 2. And then our x equals 1 plus 3i and 1 minus 3i from earlier. So there are our four zeros. As you can see, the textbook also did a graphical method, and theirs was probably a little bit easier. They graph their original function, and using the graphing utility, we could see we had zeros at x equals negative 2 and x equals 3. That's probably a little bit easier than doing long division, plus the conjugate pair that we were given at the beginning, and we find that our zeros are 1 plus 3i, 1 minus 3i, and 3 and negative 2. So that concludes this particular video on the linear factorization theorem, and we'll get some more practice with this when I see you in class.